com políticas públicas adequadas e uma mano do mercado com preços acessíveis. Ao redor de 16 milhões de... Um, good afternoon, everybody. As uh, my final set for this year's uh, scope um, event by CAFRA, um, we will give you a brief background of uh, how the Vapors uh, PH organization came to be. So uh, please watch our presentation and uh, feel free to uh, give your comments or any of your questions in our chat box. Thank you. Um, good afternoon, uh, everybody, and uh, welcome to another segment of uh, our presentation here at uh, SCOPE. As we have learned in our previous interviews, many thanks to the advancements in technology, we now have uh, less harmful alternatives to smoking, such as uh, vaping and the use of e-cigarettes. Although not consuming nicotine altogether would be ideal, such as an abrupt approach is to me, not really, not really uh, realistic. The presence of safer alternatives is a tangible, although imperfect, solution as the world seeks an end to this pandemic. Considering the relatively novel status of vape and e-cigarettes, the public has yet to learn the benefits we stand to reap from them. From them, uh, for today, uh, we've invited the first president of Vapors PH. Uh, Mr. Tom Pinlock, um, he, he, he was the founder of Vapors PH, which is a non-profit consumer advocacy group. <clears throat> to share with us, he is here with us from the United States to share with us more about the efforts that he has uh, initiated to forward vape and cigarettes and e-cigarettes potential as the safer alternative here in the Philippines. So uh, I'd like to welcome Mr. Tom Pinlock. Hello, hello, everyone. Hi, thanks for having me here. Good evening, Tom, and um, uh, thank you very much for uh, uh, giving us uh, your time. I know you're a very busy person, so let's go ahead and start. And uh, before anything else, um, where did your idea to, 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 to uh, start Vapor's PH come from? Um, actually, the idea came about uh, because there was a lot of uncertainty during that time. Um, this was sometime around 2014 to 2016. Um, and basically, the lack of, inf of information was all about the juices that we're using. Um, also, with the <clears throat> conflicting information that we get, through uh, the internet, social media. Um, some people are saying that uh, vaping was a good alternative. Some were saying that it's a dangerous alternative. Um, but it was something I was hoping to jump on. Vaping was something I was hoping to jump on uh, because I wanted to quit smoking. Um, it's, it's a well-known fact that uh, smoking is dangerous for us. Um, smoking um, uses combustion, which basically creates star, which, you know, I've seen pictures on the internet. If you look at the pack of cigarettes, the pictures are on, on the side of it, um, how it affects your lungs. So that was something that I didn't want to happen to me. Um, and that's how it all started. So, yeah, I'm just asking people who were already vaping. I was fortunate enough to know um, 
one vapor his he has been vaping for years years already actually he was one of the first few people who put up a store in the philippines um although during the time that when i met him he already closed down his store he said that there was a lot of you know things that he had to contend with because nobody knew how to to regulate what he was trying to sell i see I mean, but, yeah. um, I, I think that's still an ongoing struggle here in the Philippines now, as as as, as we as we go as as we go along. Um, the, I I know it's still a long journey, but uh, as just a follow up question, um, wh wh when did you start? Um, when did you really establish a vapors pH? And maybe you can you can share some of the struggles of uh, the organization when you initially started it okay so um it it wasn't created uh, initially like i want to be able to do this it okay. was it was a long process of you know trying to trying to find as much information as i could because if this was a habit i was gonna pick up i wanted as much information um you know to to help myself become uh confident in its usage and also you know it's something that i'm going to be uh, using probably for the remainder of my lifetime or as i see fit um and before then i was smoking for like 15 years so the whole process of you know quitting smoking um i knew was going to be difficult and before i i, I had to undergo a new way of doing things. I had to find out as much as I could. Um, now, during this process, I was able to meet like long-time vapers, um, other people who vaped uh, casually. I was, I, I made it a habit to chit chat with some of the store owners, or sometimes even just the store personnel of the places I go to, just to ask about <clears throat> the the e-cig, the juice. So I would always, you know, kind of buy one unit and then I see another one and then I try to buy, buy it again. And it was a whole process of, you know, not really knowing what I wanted. So I didn't really know what, what I was going to buy. There was a lot of uncertainty in the market. So that whole process of, you know, asking questions, finding out uh, what the answers to those questions are, the whole research and all that. I wanted other people who wanted to veer away from cigarette smoking. I wanted to have that information be made available to everyone else who was thinking about the same questions that I had. Um, also, during that time, it was a lot of experimentation. So there was a lot of, you know, um, expenses associated right. with that. Um, aside from that, there was a lot of risks. There were, I was buying juices, trying them out from uh, stores that were legitimate, meaning, and there were they were in malls, and there were some who were selling it from their garage. Um, <laughs> some, you know, like renting small stalls, like three by three uh, stalls, and just selling it out there, but. Nice you never know how they were manufactured or whatnot oh, yeah. so it was a lot of experimentation but not a lot of answers right so the biggest the biggest question for me was how can i make sure or how can we as vapors make sure that what we're consuming is safe there has to be a certain level of control you know right in at the back of my mind i was thinking what if they were they weren't using sterile equipment when they were making the juices. What if, you know, they were getting water off of the stream <laughs> or whatever? Um, so those were some of the questions I have in mind. And I don't want the general public to, you know, fear something like this. Because on the other hand, I was also seeing a different side of vaping. I was seeing uh, studies coming from Europe, coming from the UK, 
which was telling me that vaping is considerably um, a better alternative to the traditional cigarette smoking. And they had the facts, they had the studies to prove it. So there was a lot of, you know, contradicting information, but there was also that that bright light in, in terms of the the yeah. science. I see. Because I'm a science guy. I'm like basically I, I, <laughs> I, I can hear that it was really the 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 your curiosity to so, find the answer to that to, to that intriguing question, which yeah. you know uh, motivated you to uh, start the establish uh, our organization, which is Vapors PH. But um, how was it like uh, when you were first? You know, how did you grow the membership? And uh, if you can just bring us back in time. What were your mem members like? I, I know I was there. I was what I was your vice president, but uh, if you could share uh, the, the the struggle of trying to get uh, where we were able to get uh, additional members in our organization. Um, it started off with um, word of mouth. The the initial group, as you as you recall, um, it's all about you know uh, someone saw us vaping. And they were interested in trying to find out what we knew about vaping. Maybe we could give them tips, pointers as to which to buy, which to try out, what to do. Um, so through that particular means, uh, because people found out that, you know, basically we read a lot of stuff. We tried to study whatever it is that's out there and try to sift through whatever is fact and science-based and what was you know just fear mongering that we see right. commonly on the internet so a lot of people started trusting what we were saying and a lot of people that we know from work from our neighborhoods from from you know going out and partying on a friday night you know they see us and they notice that okay it doesn't leave a bad smell on you. So the, usually that's the first impression from other people. It You don't smell like cigarettes. And that's one great thing. And they were smoking and they wanted to try it out. So conversation-wise, sharing of contact information. And they started believing. They knew. They didn't want to go to anybody else because everybody else was trying to sell them something. <laughs> right but because we were a group of people who were consumers we were using the, the product and we were a little bit more knowledgeable than the average person um and it was factual the, the information that we were saying was factual that's how like people were, came to us um, our phone numbers were being passed down from one person to the other um, giving us like a simple question like what to buy why vape we were trying to answer their fears. We're, we were trying to give them the truth and letting them decide for themselves. Do they want to continue smoking traditional tobacco products, cigarettes, or did they want to try out this alternative? Right. I think I, I, I remember you um, attending a lot of, uh, what's called this, uh, seminars with respect to vaping. Um, I remember you uh, going out of the country attending uh, certain events with regards to vaping. And, and, and the true. one thing that, that, that uh, you know, really um, made me love this advocacy more is I, I saw you humanize vaping, like what you were saying earlier, that uh, you give them the facts, you give them the actual experience that you went through. Just a very quick question. Uh, and, and the reason why I am now the president of Vapors PH is because you had to move to another country. <laughs> and uh, I think everybody in our organization, uh, our partner orgs know that. Um, do you still vape there in the U.S.? Yes, yes, I do. I do. <laughs> well, how, how is it like there? I mean, how do you buy your, your, your vape needs there? I mean, is it better there based on your experience when you were here? Um, so there are 
there are different kinds. Uh, I found that there are a lot more varieties over here. Mm -hmm. It's a little bit more open. Um, so there are actually a lot of vape stores, like individual stores, which which sell vape vaping products, juices, um, e cigs, and um, you'll find in every city there's going to be at least five, six of those you can even order online and oh. it gets shipped to your house um although since i'm here in california i think they're trying to clamp down on on uh, they're putting in regulations for shipping items ah. uh, so that's one of the things that's ongoing here at least where i am um but another thing is the prevalence of disposables so <clears throat> there are a lot of disposables and you can find them in convenience stores um this is another kind they're usually good for like 150 200 puffs um and you just throw it away for this one it, they sell you the refillable pods uh, and you can find them um in same stores like in the Philippines, which are 7 Elevens. But so. uh, in, in terms of regulations, there, do you see kids being able to buy them in the no. regular convenience stores? No, and that's one of the one of the good things. Even the traditional tobacco products and vape products, they require you to provide your ID. So that's one of the major uh, regulations. So you can't just buy it off uh, a store. I see. Yeah. Because I remember when I was in the States a, a while back, of course, uh, being Filipino, I'm, I'm small, right? So compared to the regular Americans. I remember buying a bottle of whiskey in one of the uh, convenience stores. And they asked me for my passport, thinking that I'm still <laughs> underage. <laughs> so, and that's one thing I, I, I uh, for a middle-aged man to be asked like that, I was like, okay. <laughs> Because loosely speaking, the regulation is if the person doesn't look 27 or above, or yeah, then they have to ask for ID. Oh. So, and us being Asians, typically we look younger right. than our Caucasian uh, counterparts. Right, right, right. So, so it's, uh, it's one of the requirements, which is a good uh, thing. Going back to Vapor's pH, uh, Tom. Um, at, at the onset, right now, um, we have our Facebook pages. Um, we have around 20,000 followers already. Uh, that is where um, we actually, what you call this, um, send our message out to the general public. Um, for you personally, what do you think is the legacy that you have created during your time as the president of the organization? Um, I'm, I, before I answer that, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that, you know, the community is growing. Um, we started off with just barely a dozen people um, <laughs> uh, using their own personal phones to call people out and, you know, kind of ask for assistance or try to coordinate, you know, the meetings or the seminars, the conferences that, that I used to attend. Um, so that's that's a milestone, twenty thousand. That's I, I never even thought that it would amount to like such a number. Um, but one of the milestones, I guess, was you know instilling the idea that that we're using this and this is a product that we could buy off of the market, and this is an this is an alternative to what we're used to and we want to veer away from a product that we know was harmful for us you know and i'm talking about the traditional tobacco product with the cigarettes um and you know kind of kind of making sure that we're doing as consumers usually we're at the you know we, we, we're we're at the mercy of what the sellers are doing what the government you know what the government wants in terms of direction but now what's what's uh, great is we have a voice we we found a channel wherein we could actually tell um the 
powers that be that we are here and this is our number and this is our demographic and together you know we could air out um, our concerns as consumers because this is hard-earned money that we're, right. we're 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 using you know and this is taxpayer money you know and with regards to the regulations that you're gonna gonna write and pass i mean it's taxpayers money we should have a say in it you know at least we were able to open up doors for us to be able to say our piece at the end of the day it's still going to be their decision but at least we could give them we could give them um a different perspective uh, the perspective of you know the majority because usually we're 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 at the losing end they have they talk amongst themselves they know nothing about what they're doing (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> <laughs> they know nothing about the product that they're gonna regulate um so we're we're giving them you know our point of view and i guess that alone no matter you know as we progress uh, over the next couple of years as we progress at least we open that door and that was crucial and i think that's that's that that that, that really goes back to um your 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 when, when you started the, the the organization and you mentioned about progress um i i know you're such a very busy guy there in california and all that but what do you think how will our organization play with with all of this that's happening just to give you a quick background there is an ongoing there is a an ongoing deliberations right now with respect to the we call it the vnp uh, the vape bill um, as we speak uh, the government has just recently uh, started the what you call this uh, the interpolation because the the bill from congress from the house of the representatives is already okay it is now the turn of the senate to deliberate in passing the bill and after that Hopefully, he'll come up with something. And uh, I think up until the first week of December, they will be in session before they go on recess. And as you all know, it's an election season That's here in right. the Philippines next year. So January, there won't be any passage of any bills. I, the, that's, that's just how it is uh, historically. And uh, I will just tie it up with, 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 with what you said earlier, that uh, yes, you've opened the window you've uh, you're that light there's there's us we have collated uh members who are very passionate about this advocacy also um my question is where where do you see us let's say in the next two or three years the vapors ph is an organization um as an organization uh we could establish that you know that we are a solid base of consumers that there is substantial numbers in this particular um uh base there's a big population um there were there were studies there was um estimates before uh and of course the accuracy is uh, is a little bit you know off because we didn't really have the whole machinery of uh you know like the sws survey or are you a vapor are you not we didn't have that whole thing but we had a lot of uh you know projects to try to capture a little bit of the population way back uh, even 2017. um and i'm pretty sure that as the years progressed we could say that the initial estimates that we had of like a hundred thousand two hundred thousand um vapors all across the archipelago have multiplied as the as more information comes out as the product becomes available in the market there are more and more consumers of this particular product now as the leading the leading group of consumers uh of this product we could pave the way to ensuring you know that information is made available to them um and also rest assured that you know we're doing our best to make sure that our 
rights as consumers is you know respected and heard by our bill makers our congressmen our senators um and we've actually uh, we've come a long way because when vapors ph was being you know was starting off it was almost the 2016 elections as well right so 2015 nobody was trying wanted to hear us out yeah you know? correct but when but then 2016 the elections happened and the incumbent administration came in and initially they were like they were like um we want to ban it correct so there was fear amongst all consumers like the the main question was are we gonna go back to cigarette smoking which we know is you know harmful for us uh, and we switched to this uh or are we going to continue to use this product which is unregulated and we're just going to go to the underground market which is even worse right <laughs> so now that you know there's there's some hiccups it's another election year um but at least you know they're hearing us out um there's progress and i i'm pretty sure that there's going to be a more clarity with regards to um how they're going to be regulating this or got it or how much information have they absorbed coming from us because we ever since 2017 plus with more members and more people more volunteers who want to help out we've been bombarding them with information <laughs> and i'm monitoring from overseas but i can see the activities that's ongoing in the philippines and i'm very happy that you know we're headed in the right direction. I'm pretty sure that everything's going to be a little bit more clear two to three years from now. Hopefully, something has been passed already. You know, um, yes. this would you know ensure you know the safety of all consumers, all Filipino consumers. You know, vapors. Uh, Tom, be before we end, I just have two things for you uh, before we wrap up. Number one. Um, I'm, I'm going to share something with you and uh, I, I just want you to comment on it. And then uh, finally, maybe a parting word uh, as the first uh, president of Vapors PH. You mentioned earlier that uh, you've been monitoring also the developments here in the Philippines. And I'm sure you've heard that uh, in one of the in, in one of the uh, sessions with uh, the Department of Health, I was there. Uh, I think Congressman uh, Sabiliano uh, was able to, to, to find out, or based on her interpolation, they found out that uh, certain officials in the Department of Health are, are getting funding from WHO, which uh, the funds also... I think came from the Bloomberg organization. So, um, and these are those people, these are the groups that are, you know, pushing to ban the vape products. Um, could you care to comment on that? And uh, what, what, what do you think? How does that affect us? Um, that has always been a big problem ever since, um, even before we started doing anything whatsoever that has always been a big problem um of course my thoughts on it big tobacco they have the money <laughs> they have the network they have they have the power to you know influence those who are those who have the power those who are in position you know um but we're sticking to the fact that you know we're gonna show you the science of it we've had we have studies um that show otherwise also you're thinking of you know just your own point of view these i mean the the consumers are not just a statistic they are people they are filipinos they are voters they are fathers they are you know um someone you you come across in the street they are people and they should always be be given the right to choose you know you don't get to choose for them don't take away that right um that's 
you know, that's a big problem. They're going to combat because, you know, <laughs> they're going to lose money over if more people adopt vaping. They're going to okay. lose more money. Um, besides, statistics does show that with the younger generation, um, they're no longer picking up uh, cigarette smoking. They don't like it. Yes. So the numbers are going down, going down. Uh, so they're going to do anything in their power to retain the current consumers that they have. Uh, but consumers are now more aware. They want to veer away from what is traditional. So the, uh, it's going to be an ongoing battle for all of correct, us. Correct. But yeah, it's, it's not the good side of things. Um, but the world, you know, correct. just, uh, just, does what it does. So, so Tom, <laughs> um, we, we, you, finally, the, the election season next uh, May, first Monday of May here in the Philippines. Do you have any message to aspiring politicians, uh, vapor members? Any parting words for them? For those who are running for this coming elections, please be reminded there's a substantial number of Filipinos who are using this product. And it's something they use on a daily basis. Right? Um, do not take away that choice from them. Keep this particular demographic. If you're interested in the numbers, call us up. Get in touch with us. We'll show you the actual numbers that we have. And we're pretty sure that it's a whole lot bigger. Um, if we had you know, more time, better, better um, infrastructure, you know, to give you like the whole demographic of it all. Um, these is a vote. These are voting people. Remember, smoking is not supposed to be for kids. Smoking uh, cigarettes and vape is not to be sold to underage people. So you know for a fact, if they're a part of the vapors PH, they're a voter, and they're gonna be your constituent. So take care of your your constituents. That's it. Thank you very much, Tom, for, um, for, 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 for sharing your insights, your experience, and your vision. Uh, I couldn't thank you enough for establishing Vapors PH. And uh, we, we, we owe most, if not all, of what Vapors PH is now today because of you. And finally, for those listening, year in and year out, here in the Philippines, we lose about 80,000 Filipinos to smoking-related diseases. These are individuals. As Tom said, they are fathers, brothers, sisters, mothers. Some way or another, we all have loved ones we wish to protect from being part of this statistic in this prevailing epidemic. Aside from promoting the advocacy of Vapors Philippines and other similar organizations that are very passionate and concerned Filipinos, um, we are here to send the message that we are not helpless. We are not alone in facing this dilemma. As we live and breathe, there is hope for the situation yet. Especially if we, we are willing to learn, just like what Tom did, and act on it. Again, for those who are interested to join, uh, visit our page our Facebook page, uh, Vapors PH. And again, thank you very much, Mr. Tom Pindak and the Vapors Philippines thank for you taking for your... on this advocacy and we wish you all the best in your current and future endeavors. Thank you very much, Tom. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you for having me. Um, there you go, guys. Um, that's our presentation for today. Um, basically, Vapors PH is a nonprofit organization here in the Philippines. And, uh, well, we've, we've started our advocacy sometime, I think, 2013, uh, 2014. But uh, it's some way informal. So uh, mostly, we that's why we, we say for the most part, that um, we really started organizing around 2015, 2016 at that, at that time. So uh, I'm just uh, waiting if there would be any questions.
And um, while I'm waiting for those questions to come in, I'd like to thank um, uh, CAFRA.org for hosting uh, this particular event. Um, I've had um, I've had three sessions, um, Monday, Wednesdays, and Friday this week. On top of that, I've learned from the, the, the other speakers who also shared their expertise and uh, the whole array of experience that they had in their respective countries and uh, jurisdictions. And for everybody there who wants to uh, find out more information of what we do, who we are, uh, feel, feel free to visit our page, uh, The Vapors PH. Or uh, if you're a vapor, go ahead and share your story to writetovape.org. Um, just always bear in mind that uh, you guys are not alone. If there are any questions with respect to vaping, uh, what we're doing and how we're trying to affect the change in our countries, feel free to reach out to us. Oh, this is interesting, no questions. So here's one. Um, the question goes, how does the Vapors PH plan to continue the pressure on regulators to ensure that uh, proportionate regulation happens? Um, I think pressure is uh, such a heavy word in this particular aspect. We, we, we all know the for a fact that uh, we have already unearthed certain cracks with respect to uh, regulations, like uh, what happened in the cup time meeting when our esteemed uh, DFA secretary uh, proposed amendments. So I think we will just really point out that uh, within that particular within the within the system some some people are already uh looking at the evidence and the science that are readily available and was conducted by um, renowned researchers scientists health professionals so with that fact i think this would be an additional arsenal for vapors ph here in our country to point that out and uh, i would say that uh, you know, even them that, that are supposed to be teammates in running the government are, you know, not in, uh, not in unison. And uh, as for, for everybody's information, I share the stand of our esteemed uh, Secretary Luxin that uh, it has to be proportionate regulations. Uh, I wouldn't say I will be pressuring them, but uh, I will just uh, simply be pointing out the obvious. Uh, I hope that answers the question. And uh, just for the benefit of everybody, the 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 passage, of the, hopefully the passage of the the bill or the law that will regulate. Uh, vaporized products here in the Philippines gets uh, passed within the year. And uh, fingers crossed, um, hopefully 
the government body takes the stand of uh, our DFA secretary. Okay, there's another one here at Copwatch. It is. It was uh, noted that the main debate at Cop Nine today has cert, has expanded has uh, centered around expanding funding opportunities to include business or financial institution and connected with tobacco to boost FCTC funding. Any comments? Hmm. I'm not quite sure, and I will comment on this based solely on uh, personal conviction. Um, I think it just shows that they really have so much money uh, to to spend on. Um, meaning, they would like to garner more influence, like I, I, I honestly think that this is coming from big tobacco companies. It's very simple in life. If you only have enough, you will just um, you will you will simply um, just buy for your basic necessities: food, shelter, clothing. You put in their transportation and a good education for yourself or your kids. That's it. But the mere fact that these institutions are looking into expanding to unconnected businesses with tobacco, what does, that, what does it say? It says that they have so much money that they want to spend on. And why would you try to give money to certain groups if you don't want anything in return? Quid pro quo. Um, you give something, you take something back. One way or the other. Although they might not say it directly, I think it's part of broadening one's influence. I, I, I really see no tangible reason why they want to do that, Me, but merely to broaden, um, to broaden their, uh, what you call this, um, hold on certain organizations, certain groups. Um, and uh, finally, um, as a last comment on what has happened with the uh, COP9 in, in this previous week, I think the most basic of the rights that all human beings should have, which is the right to be informed, the right to be heard, I think that's something that has been blatantly neglected. One way or the other, the uh, COP9 did not include any consumer group. And I can't think of any reason why is that so. I mean, come on. I understand that there are a lot of consumer groups. That's fine. But out of all of those consumer groups, not one, not two. Here in my country, I can name and friends with roughly around five different groups, business, consumers. None of them was invited. And there are, a lot, there are probably around 10 lobby groups that are against vaporized, vaporized nicotine products. And at least five of them were invited. My dear friends, it doesn't need a scientist, nor it doesn't need a person with a very high IQ to understand what just happened with COP9. With that, I thank you all for listening. And I hope to see you again in our few future uh, endeavors. Thank you for all your support. And thank you, Kafra.
Thank you.